Hey everyone, it's JK back with another video. So, in today's video, I'm going to talk about the Behringer Xenix X2442 USB mixer. So, this is an amazing mixer. So, I'm going to go through the front panel of it today to kind of show you and tell you what these things do. And then, in another video, I'll go through the back panel of the mixer. And then, I'll, I'll also give you my opinion on this mixer, on if it's a good mixer or not. So... I mean, I kind of just said it's an amazing mixer, but I'll, I'll let you determine that because I'm also going to demonstrate the sound for this. So, channels 1 through 8 basically have all of the same settings, so I'm just going to go through one channel path, which I'm going to choose channel 1 to do this with. And then I'll go through the main section afterwards, after I do the channels, and then the stereo channels have a totally different set of settings. So from the mono channels, so I'll go through one mono channel, one stereo channel, and then we'll get to the main section. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Alright, so up here, you have your XLR input, so that's going to be for uh, like microphones, guitar processors, direct boxes, and things of that nature. Okay, so right there is your XLR input. And then below that, where this plug is right here, that's your quarter inch input. So that's going to be for like guitars, basses, keyboards, electronic drum kits, things of that nature. Below that, you have your channel insert. So, um, you have your channel insert below that silver wire. So that's going to be for like compressors, reverb effects, and things of that nature. That's going to be like your insert for effects. And then this white knob right here, that that first white knob on, on the channel is your input gain. So right here is your input gain. So that's going to give you um, your signal for your channel. That's going to give you your signal to record with this and play live and all that. And then below that, right here, is a compressor. Now only channels 1 through 8, the mono channels, have a compressor on them. So this is going to compress your sound to give it a more tighter sound. And then there's also a red light right here for the compressor in between. So I imagine once that blinks uh, red, you need to kind of adjust your gain to turn it down. And then there's a low cut button to kind of take out some of the low low range if you need. And then we get to your EQ. So this first EQ knob right here is your high range. So that's going to adjust your horns or your tweeters depending on if you're using stereo or PA. And then below that is your mid range. So that's going to adjust your mid range of your channel input. And then your frequency knob, I'm not quite sure what this does. I just tested this out before filming this video, and I could not tell the difference of what it does. I know it adjusts the frequency of something in the EQ, but I'm not 100% sure what. So I don't know if it's just me, or I don't know. But if you have this mixer, and you know what that frequency knob does, comment down below, because I'm curious what it does. Okay? But I know it adjusts the frequency of something in the EQ. And then below that is your low range, so that's going to adjust your low range of your channel input. Now, we get to the four auxiliary outputs. So you can use these two different ways. You can use them by hooking stage monitors to them for your band members, like let's say for a church or a live show somewhere, and your band members need to hear more of each other, you can hook stage monitors to these and adjust the volume for each member. The other way you could uh, use these auxiliary outputs is by hooking an external effects processor to them and sending effects to your channel input for your instruments. Now, auxiliary 3 has an internal effects processor built into it. So, <coughs> if you hook anything up to the auxiliary 3 output 
it's going to shut off the internal effects processor. So if you don't need the internal effects processor, go ahead and use auxiliary 3 for whatever you need. But if you need the internal effects processor, do not plug anything into auxiliary 3 because it will turn off the internal effects processor. And then you have auxiliary 4. So um, I'll adjust the camera a bit so you can see it a little bit better. There you go. Okay, auxiliary 4 right here. <coughs> so auxiliary 3 is the only one that has something built into it. The other three, auxiliary 1, 2, and 4, you can put monitors or external effects on it without turning off anything in the mixer. Okay, and then this row of knobs right here is your panning knob. So if you pan it left, it's obviously only going to go through your left speakers. And center, it's going to go through both. Right, it's going to go through only your right speakers. And then below that is your mute button. So when the yellow light is on, that means your channel is muted. When the yellow light is off, it's unmuted. Okay. And then below that is your clip light. So if your channel is too loud, this will start blinking red. And that will tell you to turn down your input gain or your channel fader. You're most likely going to turn down the gain. And even after you turn down the gain, if it's still loud, then you go to adjust your fader. Okay, the other use of this light is the solo button right here. So if you press the solo button, uh, okay, there you go. So solo button right here. If you press the solo button, that's going to send your channel input to your studio monitors. And then there's a meter on the main section mixer where you could um, meter how loud your channel is with the solo button on. So you know if you need to turn up your channel or turn it down. So that's what the solo button does. It sends it to your studio monitors for mixing and mastering and all that. Okay, so when the red light is on, that means the solo button is on. When it's off, that means the solo button's off. Okay, below that is your subgroups one and two. So that's going to send your channel input to subgroups one and two. Okay. Below that is your subgroups 3 and 4. So that's going to send your channel input to subgroups 3 and 4. And then below that is your main mix button. So you press that down. It'll send your channel input to your main speakers for your audience to hear whatever you're using those for. And then right here is your channel fader. So that's your volume up, volume down. So that's your volume right there. Okay. So to recap, I'm going to adjust the camera once more. All right, so to recap, you have your XLR input for uh, guitar processors, microphones, direct boxes, and things of that nature. Then you have your quarter inch line input for like guitars, keyboards, basses, electronic kits, and things of that nature. Then you have your inserts for compressors, reverb and things of that nature. Then you have your input gain to adjust your signal for your uh, channel. And then you have your compressor to compress the sound of your channel. Then you have your low cut button to kind of get rid of some of the low range that you don't need. You have your compressor's clip light. And then you have your EQ. So your high range adjusts, adjusts your high range. And then your mid range obviously adjust your mid-range. The frequency button, again, if you know what that does, comment down below. And then your low range. So that adjusts your low range of your channel. And then you got your auxiliary outputs that you can use for external effects or uh, stage monitors. And remember, auxiliary 3 has an internal effects processor built into it. So if you plug anything into auxiliary 3, it's going to shut off that effects processor. And then this button right here is your pre-fader button for for those channels. <coughs> and then you got your panning knob. So that's the last row of knobs right here. So again, hold left. So that's left speakers center, so that's both speakers, and then right, that's your right speakers, okay? And then below that, 
is your mute button, your mute light, your clip light, and your solo light. Your solo button. That's your mute button. And then the subgroups one and two. So the solo button, once again, it sends your mix to the studio monitors for mixing and mastering and recording. And then here's your subgroups one and two. It sends your channel input to subgroups one and two. And then your subgroups three and four goes to the subgroups three and four. And your main mix sends the channel input to your main speakers. And then you got your volume fader right here. Okay? So now we're going to turn over to one of the stereo channels. So, I mean, basically the stereo channels are kind of the same thing. Uh, the only difference is <coughs> with the XLR inputs. So, see, so, there we go. So, right here is your XLR input. So, that's obviously your XLR input. And then there's no inserts on the stereo channel so you have your left input and your right input okay and then the gain knob does not adjust the quarter inch inputs of your uh, channel it only adjusts the mic input so the XLR input so that gain fader is only for the XLR in input okay and then you have your low cut button so again, it gets rid of the low ranges that you don't need. Then you got your EQ, so your high range, mid, your high mid range, your low mid range, and then your low range. So <coughs> the high mid range adjusts the high mids of your channel input. The low mid range adjusts the low mid range of your input, and then you got the low which. And then you got the low, which we already talked about. So here's the here's the low mid. Again, it adjusts the low mids of your channel input. High mids, and then your high, and then your low, <coughs> and then auxiliary inputs. Same thing. They're used for effects, stage monitors. The built-in processor is still there. And then you got your pre-fader button and then your panning button so your panning button right here and then you got your mute button same thing applies you know light off it's unmuted light on it's muted that's your clip light and your solo button light so uh, <laughs> you know solo button on solo button off subgroups one and two subgroups three and four main mix and then your fader. Alright, so really the only difference from the mono channels and the stereo channels is that you have the input gain is only for the is only for the XLR input. So this is only for the XLR input. Then there's no insert. So you got your left input and right input. And then there's no normal mid range. Instead, you got a high mid range and a low mid range. And that's really the only difference. Is the input gain only controls the XOR input. And then you have a high mid instead of a mid, and a low mid instead of a frequency knob. So those are the only differences for the stereo channels. Now we're going to get to the main section. Okay. So, the main section. I'm going to zoom in on my camera a bit. Okay. So, we have a tap tempo button, 
right here. So that's going to adjust the tempo of your effects for whatever channel you're using. This black knob right here changes your effects to different effects. Then you just gotta push it down to um, hit enter and you'll have effects. Okay? And then these knobs right here, if you're going to use the auxiliary inputs for external effects, this is your auxiliary send for your um, auxiliary one. So you gotta turn that up and then you gotta turn these up too to get your effects. If you're only going to use them for monitors, you don't even need these knobs, you just need that one. And then you can send um, the monitors and effects to the studio monitors for recording and all that. Okay. And then, and then um, over here, you have its main mix to subs. So this button right here, I know it's kind of hard to see from the video, but this button right here next to the auxiliary 3 return button or your return knob that sends your main mix to your subgroups and then right here is your subgroups 1, 2, 3, and 4 buttons for your effects and your monitors and then this sends your effects to <coughs> the headphones or the control room only so I'll kind of adjust the camera a bit so you can see a little bit better. Okay. So that button right there, it sends your effects and all that to the phones and control room only. And then here's your solo button for your returns. So that's if you use your returns for your effects. Okay. So now we're going to get to down here. Okay. So I'm going to adjust again a little bit. Here we go. Okay. So this red button right here is your two track and a USB input. So that sends your two track and your USB input to your studio monitors <coughs> for recording. Okay. This button right here sends your two track and your um, USB to your main speakers. So that, that's for playback. So recording and playback. Okay. This sends your subgroups to the control room. So subgroups one and two to control room. And sorry about that noise. And then um, this button sends your subgroups three and four to the control room. And this button sends your main mix to the control room. Okay. Alright, so kind of move the camera down a bit. Alright, so there we go. Okay, so in this button right here is your solo normal button or your pre fader level set. So when you have your solo button on, that light will either be red or it'll be green, depending on what setting you have it on. Okay? And then these are your subgroups. So you got subgroup left and right, so one and five. Left and right, two and six. Left and right, three and seven. And then left and right, four and eight. Okay? So that's for your subgroups. And then I will go down and kind of turn a bit. There we go. Okay. So here's the main faders. So we have your subgroup faders for, you know, whatever subgroups you assign them to. So one and two, for example. So left and right. And then we've got three and four subgroups. We'll just use three and four, for example. So left and right. And then your main mix fader. Okay? All right. So that is the main section of the mixer. So just to recap, I'm going to go ahead and uh, adjust, okay? And we'll go ahead and recap on all this. So this button at the very top, I know it's kind of hard to see from the camera, 
uh, because of the angle it's at but if you see the green light at the very top there's a button right there that's your tap tempo for your uh, internal effects processor for whatever channel you're using that for and then the black knob uh, adjusts your effects so you turn it to adjust you push to hit enter and then that's your screen for your effects and then you have your main auxiliary knobs for each of the four auxiliary outputs so again if you're going to use effects you need the send up and the returns up okay if you're just going to use it for monitors you only need the send up that's all you need and then you got your solo buttons for each of the four auxiliary outputs to send them to the control room for uh, metering and then you got let's see and then yeah okay so then you got your main mix to subgroup button which sends your main mix to the subgroups and then you got your assignable subgroups one and two three and four the phones slash control room only sends your effects to the control room only that button the solo returns button is only if you're using the return inputs on the mixer which I will talk about in part two okay so we're gonna go down a bit all right then we have the two track to USB which sends your two track or your USB input or output to your studio monitors for recording and mixing and mastering and then we have the subgroups 1 and 2 button which sends your subgroups to the studio monitors and then subgroups 3 and 4 which sends your subgroups 3 and 4 to your studio monitors your main mix button which sends your main mix to the studio monitors in other words when I mean studio monitors I mean control room as well <coughs> or headphones <coughs> okay and then this knob right here is your level for your headphones and your monitors your your studio monitors not your stage monitors so this level is for your recording so it's for headphones and your studio monitors okay and then you got this button which is the solo normal or pre fader level set so again when you have the solo button on it's red if it's on main solo it's green if it's on the pre-fader level set okay okay so we're almost done here and then we have the here I'll turn these down so we can see better and then we have these buttons so these are for your subgroups so left and right one and five left and right two and six left and right three and seven left and right four and eight Okay. I'm still trying to learn about subgroups, so if you have a question about them, I'll do my research and I will make a video on it, so that way you can get a better understanding of the subgroups. But I'm just now starting to use these, so it, I'm still learning. But anyway, okay, and then we'll get down to the faders. Okay, so again we're going to use the same example so you know let's say subgroup left okay so subgroup one subgroup right subgroup two and subgroup three would be the left subgroup four would be the right and then you got your main mix fader okay which adjusts the overall level of your mix so that pretty much is the front panel of the mixer so if and I will link this mixer in the description below so if you want to get this mixer um, you can click the link in the description and the mixer and you can grab the mixer for your studio so what do I think of this mixer well I think it's an amazing mixer I've had this mixer since 2017 and it's actually a pretty nice mixer it's got a bunch of different internal effects it's got a bunch of different channels a bunch of different EQ settings and you can send your sound to different sorts of speakers for different things 
I would actually recommend this mixer 100% to anybody. It, it's it's a pretty cool mixer. So again, link will be in the description below if you want to get this for your studio. And if you're new to this channel, welcome to the channel. And please consider subscribing. I will be uh, uploading more videos like this. So uh, I upload videos like this every Thursday. Give me a thumbs up. If you found value on this video, comment down below if you have any questions or concerns. Please share this video with friends and family if they're looking for a mixer like this and to give the video more exposure. And then check out more videos on the screen somewhere. And I want to say thank you to uh, James. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce his last name, but his name will be on the screen. I want to thank um, James for donating me four bucks and fifty-five cents to my uh, channel. That that really means a lot to me. It motivates me to keep creating content like this, and um, and uh, it it helps me run the channel better. And yeah, I just want to say thank you again for donating that to my PayPal. If any of you want to donate five bucks or whatever you can, uh, the PayPal link is in the description below. It really helps keep this channel running. You don't have to donate. It's an, it's optional. But just want to let you know that the PayPal link is there if you want to donate. So uh, yeah, I think that's about it. I will see you next Thursday for another tutorial or review. Alright, bye.